am Doc Alman, a Curriculum and E-Learning Specialist. Welcome to the channel that helps you learn fast and teach smart. COVID-19 introduced us to a new normal. The education sector had to quickly change. In this critical time, we need to work together. In the last few weeks, I sought the advice of Filipino teachers abroad, Siri Suva and Henny Fabre of Auckland, New Zealand, Love Latosa of Indonesia, Romel Agno of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Michelle Hermoso of Saraburi, Thailand, Davis Apas of Notanburi, Thailand, and Grace Salibe of New York, USA. They share their experiences of teaching through the pandemic and offered practical tips we can all learn from. Our team edited interview clips to create videos on various topics about remote learning around the world. You may watch this video independently or along with other related videos from the interviews. This time, let's listen to how our teacher friends adjusted and adapted to e-learning a bit earlier than we had to here in the Philippines. They shared a lot of practical tips, so please stick around. Number one, make sure that you have a very good signal because that's your main communication, yeah. And number two, you should be organized, that you should have your lesson plan too. And then the third one is always be prepared whenever something will happen, like for example, the application is not working, you can't share your screen. So make sure you have the soft copy and hard copy of those teaching materials that you need to show to the kids. So with number four, you should have a very positive state of mind that you can do this. You have to encourage yourself and then you also have to encourage the other side. Like you should be considerate to the parents. It's normal that they're going to complain. You should be able to communicate and then solve any problems or any concern. And the last one is you should enjoy whatever you do because the kids can also sense that you are very happy or maybe teacher is, is bored with us or something. So the last one is be very happy, just enjoy and everything's gonna be alright. So in times like this, pandemic or not, a typhoon or like school closure for an extended period of time, this is not the time to be alone. It's a time to collaborate with each other and to plan together. You can achieve more you can avoid unnecessary stress if you are collaborating with a team. And that takes a little bit of a guidance from leadership. So my tip for the leaders and for teachers is for leaders to encourage and to set up the stage for collaboration. For the teachers to actually take that opportunity to collaborate with your team. The next thing is support. Leaders should uh, see what kind of support their teachers would need. Teachers should look at what kind of support their students would need. And parents, the same thing, should look at what kind of support their child would need or what kind of support they would need so that the school would be able to um, either plan for that or you try to provide that support. Try to enjoy yourself, try to enjoy the, the experience. It is difficult and it can be difficult, but if you are not looking at the right direction, you'd be looking at stressing yourself with the situation. And it doesn't help you or your students or your family or yourself if you are not enjoying or not making the most out of it. Support, collaboration, and just enjoying what you have at, at the current moment. You need to be really resourceful. That's how I survived. When we flipped and switched to virtual, I spent a lot of time researching online things that I can do. As I've said before, I'm not really a techie person, but I went as far as creating my Bitmoji slides 
to make it more interesting because we were obligated to post a morning message to our class before they start work at 8.30. So to make it more creative outside of just recording my, my voice, to greet them and explain to them what they have to do for, for the day, I created my Bitmoji slides. So I learned how to do that. Again, I researched, I spent a lot of time researching what I can do, lessons I can create. Another thing that you can do also is create a lesson that's long-term, something that you don't need a workbook to use to teach. I had to pick a unit this summer for my fifth and sixth graders, and I picked the unit on ecosystems, impact of humans on the ecosystem. And I was able to do a lot of things with that. I, I was able to integrate science into it, language arts, and even, I, you know, I did a lot of grammar work with them with just a unit. Think of something that you can work with the kids for the next two weeks or three weeks. That way you can focus on that unit when you research for resources, whether it's videos on YouTube or experiments on YouTube or even read aloud books online. There's a lot of free stuff already that you can find. Dito kasi, sa Saudi Arabia, Siyempre, halos lahat sa kanila meron technology. But sad to say, hindi lahat ng country, yung ekonomiya, hindi ganun kataas yung pamumuhay. Halimbawa sa Pinas, yung mga sudyante natin, yung iba, walang gadget, walang laptop, or cellphone man lang. So, dun nagkaka-problema. So, it's frustrating para dun sa mga teacher na may ganong sitwasyon. Pero, just an encouragement lang po. Sa lahat. I think yung nangyari sa atin, nagpapakita lang kung gaano tayo magiging creative sa ating ginagawa po. So, yes, nakakapagod minsan. Mas marami pa ang preparation eh. Because you have to make sure dapat yung topic mo, napaka-specific as much as possible. Na-narrow down natin na sobrang maintindahan talaga kasi distance learning nga eh. Wala tayo dun sa actual to correct it right away. So, yun yung challenge. But on the other side, yun nga po, we get to, to know more technology and it's an addition to our skill po. Bilang isang grade 1 teacher, real talk talaga, real talk, lalo na sa mga grade 1 teachers dyan, private man or public. Sa private school, medyo ano pa tayo eh, kaya natin yung online na magturo kasi marami sa magulang ang may internet connection. Pero ang unang dilemma talaga natin is, paano natin tuturuan ng bata, eh ang pag-join nga, pag-click nga ng link, is a very difficult pa sa kanila. Then, unmute, mute, mute, unmute ng microphone, mahirap din. Tapos, kapag hindi mo na-disable yung pag-annotate, do drawing nga nila yung share screen mo. So, how do you hope or kung nakapag-start na, do not be surprised na ang bata ay maingay. Do not be surprised na ang bata ay hindi masyado nakikinig. So, paano ka magkukup dun? Hayaan mo muna sila sa mga first two meetings kasi bata yan eh. We are all aware na yung yung attention nila is hindi ganun ka katagal. So, you really have to be patient. Another thing, you you must be patient kasi katabi nila yung magulang nila. Hindi pwedeng magalit ka or magsalita ka ng kung ano. As much as we want to do that, kasi ang purpose natin is to discipline, we cannot do that. Lalo na at yung purpose natin ay hindi nila ma-interpret na mabuti yung ating intention. You, you just have to be patient or just say it in a sweet manner. No? I'd like to give you four pairs of seeds as my tips for you. Number one is to conceptualize and then create. When I say conceptualize and create, I want you to imagine how to teach outside the traditional classroom that we know of. And that will challenge your imagination. And then based on that, then start creating something. You have to come up with something because this is a tech situation we're in, so we cannot just do nothing otherwise we lose our job remember this is also our bread and butter so we have to conceptualize and create number two we need to 
collaborate and co-construct. We are all in this together. This is not a project of one teacher. This is a project of everyone. And that is why collaborating with first with your fellow teachers and in this regard you will have to observe closely the younger ones because they are always the best the young teachers they are the hope of our future education so rely on them in this matter we'll have to learn from them and co-construct also with them but at the same time collaborate with your students because online learning cannot happen if you are not in contact with them so you'll have to find your ways to really be in contact with them by phone, by Facebook, by text. Whatever you have there, use it as a tool. Keep yourselves in contact. Number three, compare and critique. This is uh, something that will challenge you because when you compare your practice with someone else, you, you see more your, your weaknesses, right? But remember that if you look at it with a positive attitude, it is by comparing and critiquing our practice that we also improve. And remember that when we improve, it's not really us that we improve at the very end because who will be the beneficiaries? It will be our students, it's not us. So whatever we do to improve our practice will have its root in the learning of our learners. And finally, my last pair of Cs, carry on with a can-do attitude. You can do it. It will be challenging, but together, we can do it. I am not really an expert into mm -hmm. online learning here. We are in the same boat. Siguro, the only thing I can say is we just have to do our best with what we have, learn and adapt as we go along. Most importantly, we should know our students and how they learn because there's no one strategy in using online learning. Some thrive with just watching videos and doing online activities. But we should remember that some students still learn better with worksheets, and you can still do that even if it is online. Some students learn better with the teacher in front of them, explaining it step by step, as opposed to using other videos online on the same topic. Really, we just need to know how our students learn and to cater for it. So what did you think? Even if the situation seems overwhelming, our teacher friends were able to embrace the new mode of teaching. We can do more than just survive this pandemic. We can even thrive. I'm Doc Almond of our eLearning Strategy PH. Please stick around for more helpful tips to help you learn fast and teach smart. Until next time! Thanks for watching this episode. This is Doc Almond of our eLearning Strategy PH, where we learn fast and teach smart.